Hi, my name is Carrie Jager and I'm here today to talk about my boss, executive chef Richard Farina of Motor Restaurant. Uh, he started off his career as a pizza cook at a Sabaros Pizza and moved on to um, going to culinary school at Johnson & Wales in Rhode Island and then worked at some of the best restaurants in Boston. After that, he settled in Chicago and knocked on the back door of Motor Restaurant where he obtained a position for two years. He worked every station in the restaurant and then was uh, promoted to sous chef under chef Chris Jones. Uh, when Chris Jones parted ways with Motor Restaurant, he was made the chef de cuisine of Motor Restaurant and uh, just this last year was promoted to the official executive chef position. Um, so you might recognize him if you've ever watched Top Chef. He was on season 9 of uh, Bravo's TV series Top Chef. Um, he's also been on um, Anthony Bourdain's No Reservations, The Today Show. He's been on the WGN um, Midday News. He, he's, he's been on TV a little bit, so you might um, actually recognize him from something that you've seen him in. Um, and so I just want to share this interview with you because um, I think that his answers are really important and I think that it would be hard for me to even put in words exactly the way that um, he kind of delivered it. So he, he made it, makes a lot of really great points that I think are important um, for young culinarians to hear um, as far as like his views on leading a kitchen now versus when he was a novice in the industry and some things that he kind of thought were going to be different that ended up um, not being exactly what he thought it was going to be but not being bad or anything just being different and then also like he talks about um, key what's key in communication how to deal with a stress of um, such a high pressure job and also kind of um, how to make difficult decisions when you're kind of forced with uh, with that um, in in the daily day to day of being an exec chef so I'm gonna cut to um, my interview with him and then uh, afterwards I'm gonna kind of touch base on some of the things that he said an example of a challenge and a joy of being executive chef. Uh, the challenge of and joy of being executive chef is trying to maintain the same level of uh, quality uh, for everything that you do uh, as the last guy that you took over from and trying to uh, essentially at that point you're in charge of everything. So uh, the challenge being trying to get everything done but still maintaining uh, the level that you want to maintain the quality at. Okay. Alright. Uh, is your view of running a kitchen different now than it was when you were starting out? It is. Uh, my view of running a kitchen now is that you need to treat your cooks like family. Um, so one of my sayings is that happy cooks make happy food. Uh, so try to make sure that your staff is well taken care of. Uh, and the thing where they think, I think a lot of people lose that when they become in charge. They think it's about that. They're like, do you do what I have to say? Yes, it comes down to that. But without you guys, I can't cook everything myself. So as long as the cooks are happy, I'm happy. Oh yeah, that's awesome. All right. What are some of the challenges you face in training and motivating your staff? Challenges that I face in training and motivating my staff. Uh, challenges is uh, having some skill levels for a cook. And you need to find the way to make each individual skill level for those cooks. Uh, I have an Excel. So like well, some person might be really good at organizing, some, some person might be really good at cooking. Or different techniques. You have to maybe customize the dishes for each person to make sure that they excel at what they're doing. You never want to set anyone up to fail. Um, and also trying to maintain patience. Kind of uh, understand that not everyone's gonna get a first try. And that's what the learning experience is about. Uh, so having the patience to allow people to mess up and also Many people fail. A very hard thing for me to do is not jump in and help someone make sure they don't fail. The only way that a lot of people end up getting better is every once in a while you let them stumble and fall. They understand what they did wrong, they change it, get better. So the challenge would be having patience, letting them fail because it's hard for me to let them fail, and trying to find uh, a way to customize dishes to give each cook successful. Oh, okay. It worked well in the past for training staff. I think this kind of covered what you just answered. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying, uh, trying to find uh, ways to customize. So everyone's got different learning abilities and trying to find what works well for them. Uh, so, you know, some people are hands on, some people like you say a recipe to and they go. Uh, trying to find everyone's strength uh, allows me to train them at the fastest way possible for each person. Okay. Yeah. 
mistakes or misunderstandings you had like early on in your career? Yeah, um, you know, um, mistakes being uh, misunderstandings too is that, um, I mean, I, I knew the chef took care of everything. I had no idea how much they actually take care of. Um, it's everything and everything that involves with the restaurant. Um, no, you think that all you do is create food, but you're in charge of everything. Uh, so trying to understand um, that if a light bulb goes out, it's your responsibility to fix it. If the faucet is broken, you got to find a way to make it happen. Um, one thing that all young cooks should understand is that to be a chef, eventually you become a therapist, a plumber, an electrician, a carpenter. Everything that you possibly have to do with the service industry and blue collar work, you end up doing. So having the understanding of that now um, is something that I didn't have when I first started. When you're faced with a difficult decision that's work-related, what helps you make the decision? Um, that's one thing I do struggle with a lot, trying to uh, make the disconnect between the emotional and the, and the, uh, the business side of it. A lot of my decisions I have trouble with based off of the emotion that I feel either towards a person or towards the idea of something. Um, and having to understand later on that it's dealing with just the business, but trying to convince myself eventually that to have a talk with someone or deal with a problem. Um, that I tell them that this is Chef Richie, Business Richie, not Fred Richie. Uh, so trying to make the distinction between that um, is the hard part. Trying to really disconnect from the emotional part of the decision. Because you know, no one likes firing anyone, no one likes yelling. Right. Um, so being, you know, having, for me it's hard because I, sometimes lacks the emotional disconnect uh, that sometimes required to make tough decisions. Okay. I think I already know, but how do you cope with the stress of your job? Uh, I work out a lot. Okay. I do CrossFit, I go around my bike. Um, talking is very good. Um, I talk with Kat a lot. Um, and I used to use my bike ride to kind of decompress and meditate, I guess you already know, think about the day, rather than trying to carry it home. Because uh, the last thing you want to do after spending a 14 hour day at work being stressed out, is be stressed out at home thinking about what went wrong during that day. Yeah. Okay. For you, uh, what is a key communicate? Or I'm sorry. For you, what is key for communication in the kitchen? Um, I think that you need to be very clear with someone. Obviously, um, communication can also uh, be um, kind of how we do with the firing system. You know, make sure you get callbacks. Make sure that people are repeating back what you said to them. Um, and also, communication can be demonstration. You know, a lot of times it's hard just to be like, do this, this, and this, and then you run, and you think they understand, but they don't. Uh, so being able to demonstrate um, what you want, as well as talk about it, uh, creates a clear path of communication where there is no question, if I give you a demonstration, sure you're not going to want it, I can't do it that way every single time. So having a physical visualization of what I'm trying to say helps a lot with communication. Oh, you have any rights anyway, buddy. So I think that um, some of the important things that he touched on were the way that um, his philosophy of managing is, you know, happy cooks make happy food. And this is really important in a small scale restaurant where there is no HR department. So he has to handle all the problems right then and there. So the best method of, uh, of solving a problem is preventing the problem in the first place. Um, and he does that by kind of keeping a really positive attitude in the kitchen. And like he said about kind of giving each cook um, something that is, uh, you know, fitting of their strength and um, not setting them up to fail. But if they do fail a little bit, to let them kind of struggle, kind of like sink or swim, um, so that they do get stronger in the long run. But I think that um, this kind of uh, really shows uh, his style of management um, by uh, leading by example and um, also by... Um, you know, being patient and understanding of cooks and knowing that thing people are going to make mistakes um, and, you know, handling things when he has to, um, you know, not letting personal or emotional things get the better of him, but making the best decision for the business. Um, I really liked what he said about, you know, this is business Richie, not, not friend Richie. 
Um, so that's something that's really important, I think, to take with you. Um, if you go on to manage a restaurant, and if I go on to manage a restaurant, I know that that's something that I also will probably struggle with. Because um, you spend so much time with these people, you get really close to them, and it's hard sometimes and you have to correct someone or come down on someone. But um, in the long run, you do have a business to run at the end of the day. Um, and I think that, you know, what he said about that was really great. And I really hope that you um, enjoyed my video, and I want to thank you for watching this, and I hope that everyone has a great spring break.